Hi, we're going to talk about photoelectron spectro spectroscopy, PES. Uh, this was just added in the redesign, what, uh, 2014, to the AP chemistry test. Um, I have seen now three questions on PES. One, on an FRQ, students did really, really well on it. And then two multiple choice questions. Um, and so that's in the last four years. I am, I'm sure we will continue to see PES questions. Um, so photoelectron spectroscopy is a means by which we can identify the atomic structure. Uh, it's an experimental way to find out where the electrons are relative to the nucleus. So you've got the nucleus and you know first energy level, second energy level, third energy level, but not only that, we can see the subshells. So first energy level, S subshell. Second energy level, we can see both mathematically from the experiment, the S and the P subshell. Get to the third energy level, um, we can see mathematically the S, the P, and the D. So it's pretty neat experimental technique to give us a picture of atomic structure. It's evidence for atomic structure. Uh, this is from Khan Academy. I'd recommend Google this. They've done a great job. It's not a video. Um, it's an article that you can read, but they do an excellent job. Khan Academy always does great. Um, so here we have the actual PES experiment. You're going to have some light source and it's going to be high energy. It's going to be like an x-ray, a high energy light source. So you hit your sample, it's going to be in this box, um, and you have your gas sample in there. You irradiate it, okay? So we're going to hit it with some light and then that energy, when it hits the atom, comes into contact with the atom, it will eject one electron. Now I'm going to use lithium as an example. Here's the nucleus for lithium. You've got your first energy level, second energy level. Um, so there is our N equals one. That's the one, oh, excuse me. <laughs> That's the one S. Um, and then our second energy level, here we go, the shell two, there is our two S one. So a little reminder, lithium is one S two, two S one. So if I had lithium in here, uh, hit it with a high energy X-ray. Um, that X-ray will it has equal opportunity to eject any one of those three electrons. Keep that in mind. There is statistically equal chance that any one of those electrons will be ejected. Now we're going to have trillions and trillions of atoms in here, um, so we will see a percentage that um, a third of what we see is going to come from this um, two S um, two S one and then two thirds of what we see ejected is going to come from the one S because you have two electrons in the one S and one electron in the two S. So there's equal opportunity for one electron to be ejected. And when PES happens, only one electron will be ejected. Once one electron is removed from the atom, then um, no other electrons will be removed from that atom. Now notice this right here. So the electron's ejected, it flies away. Um, and it's going to be detected in this energy analyzer right here. Um, and based on the speed at which that electron is ejected, we can figure out the amount of energy that it took to remove that electron. So let me show you this. Here's our formula. I've written it right here. The energy of this photon, okay, so we have the energy of this photon, and it's going to be a high energy. In addition to that, we know it we can put a certain setting on that, the amount of energy that we put into it. So we will know the energy of the photon. That is going to equal two things. So when this energy hits the atom, so when I have energy come and hit that atom, it's going to hit that electron, it is going to uh, give enough energy, ionization energy, to remove the electron, to eject it. Now the second thing that happens is all of that energy that was put into it from the x-ray, enough energy to remove it. Well, the leftover energy is how fast the electron comes flying out. That's the kinetic energy. So the energy that we put into this atom is going to be transferred into ionization energy and the kinetic energy. Energy to remove the electron and the speed at which that electron comes flying out. So you're gonna have some kinetic energy from that electron. So if we can um, detect the speed right here that the electron comes flying out, we know the amount of energy that we put in, then easy math, 
we can find the ionization energy. And that's what the spectroscopy does. It's going to give you a graph of the ionization energy just by using this really simple formula. So let me show you an example of a PES spectrum. So here we have it, our PES spectrum. And this is going to be for lithium. Um, now notice the size. So y-axis relative number of electrons. There were three electrons, two on the 1s shell, and then um, one in the 2s shell. They had equal opportunity to be ejected, those electrons to be removed. Notice that this peak is twice the height of that peak. So just looking right there, you go, oh, there were two electrons in the first energy level and one electron in the second energy level. Um, so there's a first piece of information. Second, binding energy. Binding energy is the same thing as ionization energy. It's just how you look at it. Binding energy is the energy that holds the electron in that energy level. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove that electron. Uh, we will oftentimes, oftentimes do the binding energy as a positive and the ionization energy as a negative. Um, but they're the same, conservation of energy. The energy required to hold the electron in that energy level is the same energy required to remove the electron from that energy level. So binding energy, ionization energy, you can use interchangeably. In fact, I'm going to come over here on this formula that I gave you. The energy of the photon equals the ionization energy plus the kinetic energy. You could also put that as binding energy. Okay, now here's your really important takeaway, and it comes from Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law tells us that the closer the charges are to each other, okay, so the smaller the distance, the greater the energy. Check this out. 6.26 megajoules per mole, 0.52. So just by looking at this, I'm thinking, which energy level had um, the higher potential energy? Is the first energy level, because it's closer to the nucleus. Remember, there's the nucleus, first energy level, second energy level. Those electrons are significantly closer to the nucleus than the second energy level. So these are going to have a higher potential, takes more energy to kick that electron out, to ionize it and remove it. It's going to have a higher binding energy. Um, so here's your quick, fast, dirty way to do this. You find the highest binding energy, the highest ionization energy, and that will always be your 1s. From there, you just go down in consecutive um, ionization energies, binding energies, and do the electron configuration. So if this is a 1s, that is your 2s. And you can look at the height of the peaks to determine the amount of electrons. So 1s, I know I can only fit two electrons. That's going to be a two. This is half the size, so I only have one electron right there. And there is a picture using PES of what the atomic structure looks like. This, right here. This would be your binding energy. So there's your 1s2, 6.26, and here's your uh, 2s1, and it's 0.52. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, a couple of takeaways, and we'll do one more example. Um, so again, PES is evidence for atomic structure. You can see it right here. Here is the driving formula. The energy you put in is going to hit the electron, goes to two places. Number one, energy to remove the electron, that's the ionization energy, same thing equivalent to binding energy, and the speed at which the electron flies away. So your really quick takeaway, the highest ionization energy that you have on the spectrum is always going to be the lowest energy level, which is your 1s, okay? Highest energy level will always, um, excuse me, highest ionization energy will always be the lowest energy level, your 1s, because it's Coulomb's law, that valent, or that energy level is closest to the nucleus. Um, next, notice there's an indirect relationship between ionization energy and kinetic energy. The higher the ionization energy, okay, so it takes more energy to remove the electron, the slower that electron will fly away because there's not as much energy put into the electron for its speed. Um, likewise, the lower the ionization energy, the faster that electron will fly away. So you could be given the spectrum, but be given um, kinetic energy and just go, oh, inverse relationship. The 
lowest energy level, the 1S, will always have the lowest speed because it took the most energy to remove that. Chew on that for just a little bit. Here's your formula, indirect relationship between ionization energy and kinetic energy. The closer that electron is to the nucleus, the more energy to remove it, the slower it flies away. The further that electron is from the nucleus, less energy to remove it, lower ionization energy, but that leftover energy from the photon means it will fly away really flat, fast, have high kinetic energy. Um, let's see here. And then the importance of relative number of electrons. So the number of electrons in the subshell is equivalent to the height of the peak, to the height of the peak. So I look first at that 1s and I know that's my 2. So that's the two, and then everything else in the spectra, I compare to that and I'll know how many electrons are in that particular subshell. Let's do another example here from Khan Academy. Many thanks to Khan Academy. And we're going to figure out what this is. Okay, so looking at this, first place I go is highest ionization energy, highest binding energy. We've got 1.31, 3.04, 52.6. Now the reason why this is stacked is we just don't have, we're trying, the um, creators were trying to do this to scale and they didn't have enough paper to do this. And so you'll see that sometimes three, even four, um, that they'll stack on top of each other. Just find the highest number and that's always going to be your 1s. So I see that highest ionization energy, my 1s2. And that's the height of two electrons. Um, so then I find my next highest energy level. Oh, there it is is a 3.04, so that must be my 2s2, same height, and they were so kind, they gave us the number of electrons. AP has also done that. Um, and then uh, I come to my next one, so this must be my 2p. Notice that this peak is twice the height of that peak, so there are four electrons, and they told us the four right there. They didn't give it to you though, you just compare heights of, peak, of the peak. So we've got 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, that is going to be oxygen. That is the PES and the atomic structure for oxygen. Um, two little notes on here. Every once in a while, you'll see the creators put a dash like that. If they do that, that means that they shrunk the scale. They took out a section of the scale to try and fit everything on one, on one line. So don't let that double line uh, phase you. Um, let's see here. I had another thought that I wanted to share with you. Oh, I can't remember. If I remember, I'll add it to the video or I'll put it down in the comments. Um, otherwise, there you have, have it, PES, rule of thumb, highest ionization energy, bonding energy. You just put that as your 1S and then do the electron configuration consecutively from that. Okay, good work, have a nice day.